In this video, I'm going to show you how you can deal with multiple drag sources going into a single drop target and all the ways that you can customize it in Adobe Captivate. So one of the viewers of my channel wrote the following question. Hello, what can be done about the stacking of answers when we put two or more in a drop target within a drag and drop interaction? Well, today I'm going to share with you all the options and the ways that you can make it make sense to your learners when you're dragging from one spot into a single drop target, especially if there's multiple drag sources here. So let's take a look at the project that I have on my screen right here. Now, I've got a few different items here and a drop target. I've already set up the drag and drop interaction. I've just gone with the default of hiding it, which you can undo or show at any time you wish. But let's first of all talk about um, the snap behavior. And this is how you control what um, multiple items work for. So the default is this anchor position centered on your drop target here. Now I have an example of when I might do a one-to-one -one drag and drop. So let's just take a look at this and see how this behaves here. Okay, so item one will go to drop target. It's not really working right because my intention was originally to have this actually align to the bottom so you could still see the drop target title. So here's how you change that. You change that by using one of these three options down here. So in other words, you want your drag item anchored to one of these three options down below, either along the center edge or bottom left, bottom right, either one would work. And let's preview this now and you can see how this works. So if I drag this over and I can still see the drop target and I've got my item description below that. And of course I could then submit that question. Now, if I have a different situation and I think this is more in keeping with what the viewer was asking about, let's resize all these items so that they're the same size. And we'll change that drop target back to the default center position. So here's the problem. If I preview this, I can drag all these items over to my drop target, but as a learner, I might forget which items I've already dragged over because what's going to happen is that the subsequent drag sources are going to cover up their earlier drag items. So you can only see the last one that you put in place. Now it does happen to be that's the correct answer. That's fine. But there are some other choices here. So what I can do in this case, is choose a completely different snap behavior. In this example, I think what's appropriate is to use the tile option. Now, the tile option works best if you can be very precise in sizing your objects. So these little doodads here, let's take a look at them in the properties inspector under options. They happen to be 212 pixels. So it would be 424 if I wanted them side by side. So let's make sure this is 424. I'm going to uncheck constrained proportions. 424. So it's a little bit thinner. And um, let's see how high we are here. This is 76. Uh, yeah, that should be okay. We should certainly have no problem uh, showing multiple items like that. So if I select my drag target, we return to the drag and drop panel. We'll choose one of these Z patterns and these Z patterns represent the order. Now I want people to still see the title of drop target. So you might want to choose uh, either this one here where it starts at the bottom left and works its way right and then up. Or you can choose this option here where it starts at the bottom left, works its way up and then goes to the right. I think I prefer this one here. So let's preview that and see how that works for this situation. So here we go. Item one goes over. Item two, you see they fit perfectly. Item three and then item four. And of course I can submit still a correct answer. So this is a great way to deal with multiple items going to a single drop target. Now 
there's a couple of other options I want to show you. If let's say you don't necessarily need to see the items, but in fact you'd like them to appear as if they're going inside the drop target. Uh, let's go back to the default anchor style of snap behavior. And instead what I'm going to do is change this depth from front to back. So let's preview what this looks like, and maybe this applies for your situation. Okay, so as I drag these over, they essentially go behind the drop target, almost as if the drop target is consuming them. And then of course I can submit that and get that correct. Now there's one final option I wanna show you, and that's this absolute choice here. Absolute snap behavior, you'll see that little chart goes away of the different snap behaviors. Absolute means that you literally are going to drag items over and they will drop wherever you happen to drop them. I'm going to change the depth back to in front so we can still see them and we can preview this. So essentially wherever your learner puts these items, that's where they'll go. So drag item one, number two, number three, and you can kind of be willy nilly about where you place them but obviously it sticks to the drop target still and still counts that as correct. So there are three essentially different ways um, and you can customize them to a degree the, of snap behavior that you can choose. Again, the original anchor, and of course you can choose any of the sides or the corners, tile to keep them all independent. You can hide any of those choices by using the back instead of the front depth so that they appear to go inside your drop target. And of course, we've just seen the absolute snap behavior and it goes wherever the learner puts those drag items. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at captivateteacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.